Thank you very much for the introduction. Hi, uh, bonjour. <laughs> My name is Marius Gil. Uh, today I would like to talk a little bit with us uh, about the understanding of application with metrics. What kind of techniques we can use, what kind of tools we can apply into our code, into our infrastructure to get knowledge about how our application perform on production. Um, I came from Poland, from Wrocław. Uh, this, this city is extremely popular uh, in Poland right now. This is a European uh, culture, a European ca capital of culture in 2016. In the next year, uh, my, my, my city will be the host of the uh, World Games. So if you would consider to visit my city, feel invited. Uh, <laughs> on a daily basis, I am uh, owner of Source Ministry. This is a small company, and I am a software architect and uh, a software trainer. I'm working with teams uh, trying to adopt uh, better techniques, uh, maybe uh, uh, like domain driving design or even sourcing and things like that. Uh, okay, uh, but for me, this is a community conference and I'm one of the community leaders in our PHPers community in Poland. There is another <laughs> in the first row power uh, from which. Uh, this is an uh, amazing thing for, for, for me. Uh, we started this community three years ago after one conference in Warsaw. And after only a few years, all the local user groups related to PHP are united under this blue elephant. And in 2016, we've got the first uh, our community conference. And this is your 15, 16 edition? Okay, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I can be jealous <laughs> for that. Okay, but uh, let's do the business. Uh, I think most of our in this room are the developers, right? Who is the developer? Okay, and who is from the business? Okay, <laughs> okay, Damian. Okay, so I can assume that we can, uh, we, we love creating code, right? I can write it, some of us like testing. <laughs> and when the tests are ready, when the code uh, is implemented and the tests are passed, so we can release it. So what do you think? Uh, where does our responsibility end? Is the commit to the repository and the push to the production is the last element we can do with our project? What do you think? Hmm? Should we care about something else? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but not all of you are convinced for that. <laughs> so uh, in some teams, I see the situation, there is a group of the developers and a group of the sys administrators and nothing between them. And I call it the no man's land because <laughs> and no man's land, this is a place where the monster live. Um, why? The developers in very situation know nothing about the server infrastructure, the server uh, possibility to handle the traffic. And from the other side, the sys administrators completely know nothing about the application, application structure, application needs, and structure of the application traffic. So, for example, when you've got the release and traffic to your backend services like database or cache servers grow up two times, so this is this, it was expected. So imagine that someone uh, from the uh, sys admin teams see a huge spike on the dashboard in Nagios. It's not nothing, it was expected or not. So uh, to, 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 to explain this a little bit better, so I would like to use a context. And the context is my story from the project I, I was involved in in Warsaw. We had one application, uh, sorry. It was single application, <clears throat> responsible for generating a recommendation for the users. Uh, we are working with 1,000 partners, 1,000 huge websites in Poland, and we've got the JavaScripts installed on 1,000 websites, and we are able to analyze the traffic for these users. And uh, this application was created by a team, very small, for only three guys and one remote administrators. We've got the 12 servers, eight for the application and four for the database, RabbitMQ, Redis instances, and small Java stack. <laughs> and after all, we've got the millions of users. Uh, I think it was 25 unique, millions of unique users per month and from four or five countries from Eastern Europe. I don't remember exactly. And of course, we've got the very interesting and uh, well done infra monitoring with Nagios. Who is using Nagios in your project? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using Nagios or maybe some other stuff? Okay. 
So uh, we had a really nice infrastructure monitoring tool set, but we've also had a lot of problems. And imagine that there is a Friday, 3 p.m., and your application stops. Your servers are overloaded. So the question is, what's going on on production? If you haven't some tools for the monitoring, of course, for alerting, you probably know nothing about this. So we realized in one moment that we can manage what we can't measure. So it, it's what the <laughs> it was a sentence from Edward Deming. So we started very quickly on some very internal small project. Uh, and this project was related to gathering the data. We started gathering the data in the context of how many page views we are serving, how many uh, clicks we've got from the users, how many different unique sessions we've got right now in the seconds. And uh, this, the, it, it was something like that. We've got the unifier for the period of the time, we've got the name of the, this metric, and we've got the counter, which count the number of the events in this particular period of the time. Do you see any problems here? It was single database table, 24 uh, columns, each column for one hour, and one for ID, one for the metric, and for the date. Do you see any problem there? Hmm? What do you think? Is it okay? We implemented in two days the solution. Okay, so it was a story. When we stored the data in the database, we created a small layer in our admin panel just for presenting the data. And it was, ju ju we, we took the, the, the JavaScript library and the, um, our team uh, were able to, to see the trends. We realized that we've got the trends in our application. And our application, our user, our servers behave differently, completely differently in business weeks, in business days, from Monday to, 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 uh, to Friday. And in weekend, we've got totally different behaviors. And after a few months later, we realized that we've got a different behaviors and different trend on different markets. For example, on Ukraine, uh, <laughs> traffic and in evening hours was very, very low. But during the, uh, the morning, we've got the, 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 the traffic spikes. So when we've got the, the storing layer and presenting layer, we're able to react. We are able to perform some actions uh, based on this charts. For example, we've, when, we've got, uh, when we see that we've got a lot of new requests for new client, okay, we can scale up. Um, but this, I, I said we've had the problems, and this problem was very low resolution. So we started from periods with length one hour. One hour is uh, extremely wrong. It was, uh, it was chosen because we, we could implement this very, very quickly but it was a very wrong decision. So we started think how we can exchange this hour simply monitoring stack with some better tools. And to realize that all we need to do is we are using the metrics, right? This is a metric. So the question is, what is the metric itself? The metric itself, it's something, it's, it's a value that's changed over the time. So this is a very generic recommend very generic uh, definition, right? So what do you think? What should be measured in your application? Give me an example. What should be measured, or in general? Hmm? Okay, what else? Okay, what else? We've got number of visitors, status codes in HTTP, what else? Hmm? Response time. In general, everything what is important for you for you as a developer and for you as a business guy. So we can create some technical uh, metrics, exactly as to say, response time, request page view. <laughs> okay, we can collect some extra data from the CPU, from the disk usage, from the network usage. Who had a problem ever that network was saturated? Saturated that, that you, your network cannot uh, transmit more packages. I had this problem because we didn't monitor this network uh, metrics. Okay, you can also create some metrics, technical metrics, for example, for deprecated function calls. If you've got a huge project and you've got the established process for deprecating the code, 
For example, as a first step, you can create a, a annotation deprecated, and then you can, after the math, you can create a, a check in the code. When someone calls this function, even if it's deprecated, I will get some counters. So if there is no calls after the math, okay, I can remove this code. Because the name of the function could, let's say, be concatenated from the, from the strings, and my ED, like PHP Storm, cannot follow this, this, this function. And after all, you can create some business metrics, like uh, page views, unique users, pen math, or other key performance indicator. So as you see, there is a lot of different metrics you can uh, check from your code, right? So another question, why it should be measured? Why? Because I get insights from this data. Uh, for example, um, typical, typical insight. Mm. How many servers I would need let's say, in two months when the, the, uh, the, 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 the traffic will be um, exactly the same or will be higher. So I can perform some capacity planning based on the metrics. If I had no data, I cannot do performance uh, capacity planning. Okay? I can, uh, for, for example, we'll talk this uh, a little bit later, but you can imagine that you can perform anomaly detection on your data. For example, Imagine that your application has 10 second downtime, or your application, one of your servers, perform 10% worse. So this is an anomaly, and you can detect this automatic way. So how you can store the metrics? Okay, you can follow our <laughs> bad example, and you can store on your own in the MySQL database, or you can use some dedicated tools for that. For example, time series databases. Who are using any time series databases? What kind of time series databases are you using? Graphite, okay. So in general, time series database is a software which is optimized for handling array of numbers indexed over the time. So you can imagine that this is a SQL database, something like SQL database. You can communicate with this application, with this database server using a SQL dialect, but um, this, the tables inside this database have no primary key, there is no foreign key, but there is something like time index. Your data are optimized and ordered over the time. So if this is a database optimized over the time, you can perform some queries. For example, I can analyze data from last month, split it in uh, parts, let's say with length five seconds, one minute and we will perform it extremely, extremely fast. So there are many different solutions you can adopt. The Graphite itself, RRD database, it's one of them. We use Graphite, of course, but there is a lot of uh, issue with Graphite, especially in the storing layer, because <laughs> you need to have a good hardware to store all the data. Um, okay, another tools like Prometheus or OpenTSB. Okay, this is open source stuff you can use. Today I would like to show you something called TickStack. TickStack, this is an open source project for Influx Data Company. Of course, there's also the, 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 the enterprise version. This is, TickStack is created from four, four <laughs> sorry, from four applications. T is for Telegraph. Telegraph is a small daemon written purely in Go, extremely lightweight, extremely fast, and this daemon, the Telegraph, uh, can connect with your database, MySQL, Postgres, I, um, let's say uh, MSSQL, or your web server like Nginx, like, like Apache, IIS, or maybe with your Hadoop cluster, or PHP FPM, and collect your data, how this particular service perform. For example, how you can check Right now, who is using MySQL? Most of you, I think. Uh, how we can check how my, MySQL perform? I can connect with a MySQL client to the database, how, what, what kind of comments I can uh, send to the server to check how it performs. Hmm? Show status, show handlers. You will get the information, how many uh, records, how many index hits, how many misses, you've got how many pages from the disk were fetched. A lot of data, and imagine that if, if, if you understand what kind of data, what kind of information you've got from this show status, show handles, commands, 
you can fix your application issues on the performance side. For example, ah, there is a query, with, probably there is a query with order by runt. Just locate and fix it. Okay, so uh, Telegraph can connect with your Redis, with your web server, with your database. At the certain, there is 40, 60, I don't remember, uh, ready to use plugin out of the box. Just the data collected from your instance of your backend service will be injected into the InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series database. One more time, written poorly in Go, extremely lightweight, extremely, <laughs> extremely fast, and this is the database where your data is stored or direct over the time. So imagine this is a database you can connect and using, by using a SQL dialect, you can insert, fetch, and aggregate the data. And when you've got the, in the data in your database, you can use another element from the stack, like a chronograph, to present your information. Uh, to be honest, I don't like the chronograph. <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, you can replace every single element from the stack with your favorite solution. If you don't like the chronograph like me, you can use the Grafana. Who is using the Grafana? Okay, uh, I'll show you Grafana uh, a couple of minutes later. And uh, finally, there is another extremely interested, in, interesting uh, element called capacitor, which uh, per, uh, allows you to perform some very advanced operations like ETL, extract, transform, load, get the, my data from my database, transform, and uh, send to the Hadoop cluster or something like that. Capacitor has also uh, ready to perform some anomaly detection out of the box. Okay, so a uh, small hello world, how you can communicate with InfluxDB from the SQL command. Just log into the server, SSH, and create Influx, call the Influx uh, client, and then you can create a database. Very similar to MySQL, right? Just create a database, let's say test. Show database, okay, <laughs> I can prove that database was created. Use test. Any differences from MySQL world? So far, no. Okay. Yeah, but the insert operation will be a little bit different. Okay, so I can insert to the table of the clicks some information. I mean, I can insert the value with some extra parameter, parameters. When I create few inserts like that, I can select them. Select asterisk from clicks. One more time, uh, this is a standard SQL select. So there is no ID here, but there is a time column, right? Because the time series is optimized and the data are ordered over the time. So every single parameter I create in this one, in this way, are ready to use. And I can perform some select with where statement, with where clauses, by using these columns. The most important thing is, of course, this column, because this is a value which changes over the time, over some conditions. And after all, you can create a select with some uh, group by over the time. For example, uh, from the last two minutes, uh, get the, all the values and group by in the five second slots. And I'm interested in the number of these values, the mean value, and the median. Okay. <clears throat> ah, I can also add some extra element because there is no value in this slot. Okay, I can use some uh, aggregation selectors and transformation functions uh, to, create, to create some sums, distinct operations, and calculate some percentiles if I'm talking about, if I'm thinking about the context of the time, and I can use some uh, very advanced functions like non-negative de derivative. When I've got the, the most important thing, it's not creating the query. Imagine that if you've got the query, you can visualize this query. And when you can create a visualization for this query, you can see your trends in your application. Select clicks where mode is equal CPC and type uh, is equal paid and source is at network. Select the value. 
And when you create this kind of query, this kind of visualization, you will know exactly what's going on in production. Okay, in the real world, um, we probably would like to use some better techniques than sending the queries, especially for writing the data into the influx. <coughs> Sorry. And you, you've got the plenty of the options. For example, you can use HTTP API or use Graphite Protocol or StatsD or the CollectD or JSON UDP, many options ready to use out of the box. So, for example, if you've got some script written in Bash and you would like to create a metric, a value in the database, just send a post. Just send a post request, pass all the parameters, and your data will be stored. You can also create some uh, get request to your data, and you will get uh, the same da data uh, as, you, as you perform a SQL uh, select statement. And of course, <laughs> this is a PHP conference, so you can also use the PHP library to, to, to cover this kind of options. You can create the points over the time, and you can publish, read, and all the things. Uh, you can perform from the command line or the uh, CURL uh, Unix stuff. But um, fortunately, all the time series databases, most of them, supports some data structures. And uh, I would like to show you four data structures, which are, if you are familiar with StatsD daemon from Etsy, uh, Etsy, by the way, is an amazing company, and the creator of first version of PHP Rasmus Leder works uh, for Etsy. They created a, a StatsD daemon, and uh, this is uh, one of the clients for StatsD written in PHP. And this is a representation for the structure called counter. Counter is a value you can increment or decrement. For example, uh, when you've got the page view in your application, just increment this counter. <coughs> plus one by default or plus uh, any value you want. If you would like to decrement some, some, some counters because you can increment and decrement, just call the decrement function. Uh, for example, when, you're, when you've got the new user, or when you've got the new login request to your application, just send a, uh, in, increment this counter. <coughs> I had the opportunity to work for the, a um, couple years ago, I was working for the, uh, the biggest social network in, in Poland, and using this technique, using these counters, we monitored simultaneously 15,000 or more metrics from our application, 15,000. If there is a display for the CAPTCHA, increment the counter. If the CAPTCHA was passed correctly, increment the counter. If, pass, if the CAPTCHA was uh, entered wrong, there was a typo, increment the counter. And after all, we've got the Vickers, <laughs> sorry, we've got the chart, Vickers is a Polish word, sorry. Uh, <laughs> we've got the chart where all the spam attacks were presented. We've got the spike on the uh, capture generation, okay, we've got a DDoS attack. <clears throat> okay, there is a structure called GOGS, or I can pronounce this, I think. <laughs> uh, this is a, a structure when you can insert the actual value of the metric. Not the increment, not the decrement, the actual v value for this metric. For example, if you are performing the cron script, and you, count, you, sell, you, you, you create a, a query for counting the, the users into the database, just use this uh, GAUGAS structure. And as you see, you can also use the timers, especially for all the communications uh, with users, with all the communications with backend services. For example, when you've got the call to the uh, AWS S3, you can wrap this code with timers and send to the influx uh, information, okay, it took 10 milliseconds. Or, in general, as you said, you can measure all the uh, time you, you, you had to spend, your application had to spend on page generation and to react. And the last one is sets. Sets are extremely useful when you need to collect and calculate the unique, the number of the unique elements in set. For example, how many, how many unique users per day 
are using your application? This is a tricky question because if you've got 10,000 users, you can put them into the database and select the count. That's all. When you've got 40 million of users so storing all the identifiers, it's probably the, the worst decision you can make. You can use the sets. You can use, for example, the hyperlock lock structure from the Redis. Are you familiar with hyperlock lock structure in Redis? It's implementation of uh, Google white paper. And <clears throat> to create an estimation how many different unique set, uh, unique elements you've got the set, the Redis needs only 12 kilobytes memory. 12 kilobytes memory. So as you see, counters, goggles, timers, and set, and this monster is killed. <laughs> so to, to, to show you what kind of knowledge and how you can use it, I would like to show you a small demo. This demo came from uh, the microservice training. Okay. There is a microservices application written in PHP. There is, I think, four, five or six microservices. One microservice for uh, CMS. Or the, where is the pointer? Oh, yeah. One microservice for the uh, CMS content. One microservice for statistics uh, transaction because uh, this training was for some financial team, and. We've got some exchange trace microservices. This microservice uh, connects to the National Bank of Poland and fetch the actual uh, rates for some uh, for some for some currencies. <clears throat> and we've got some extra uh, extra microservices. For example, one microservice responsible for uh, serving the structure of the page. So I can create another pages in my application, just creating a, a page definition. And the last one is responsible for composing all the stuff. Uh, let's say if it will, I check if I got internet. OK, I've got internet. So it will probably very, very slow. See? Page is loading. The question is, which microservice is slow? My one single uh, request is transformed to the six different, um, sorry, so the six different um, microservices, and I don't nothing about which is slow. So I run one extra element in my background to avoid okay so on this chart you'll see the performance of free microservices i've got the microservice for text content for exchange rates and uh, because there is no space here okay microservice for composition We need to, oh, sorry. I need to change something, okay. I enabled. Page refreshing here, okay. And in every 10 seconds, I think this chart will be refreshed. And I see that only one microservice responsible for communicating with National Bank of Poland is extremely slow. So when there is a problem in production, there is no time for guessing. You need to take a look on your, on your monitoring stack, on your uh, alerting stack, and you should get the insight what is going on. So I can change one thing in my code. to improve the performance of this of this microservice you will see the difference in few seconds
because I see that the infinity loop on my console as much, much faster. But this InfluxDB is uh, running in, in my uh, Docker container. So in a few seconds it should be, or oh, where is the pointer? <laughs> Auto refresh was turned off. And right now, my application is performing very, very well. As you see, I, I would like to not perform a full check, code review, where is the problem? I can take a look on one chart, uh, properly prepared, and. Uh, can see. So imagine that we've got the application, we've got the, the many, many different services. And you get knowledge. You, you, you can uh, monitor everything uh, very, very quickly. Uh, in this application, it was prepared with Silex code, and this monitoring toolset was created in, as an application middleware. And three lines of code, honestly, three lines of codes. This one as a, a middleware reporting for the status codes, for the timers, and one uh, entry, one item in uh, my application dependency injection container. And I've got many, many possibilities. Every, every uh, microservice you saw was wrap it by this middleware. Three, four lines code, no more. So, but when it comes to collecting the data and you've got the very popular application when you've got the t millions of requests per day, you will probably suffer from some uh, data volume problem. So if you've got 10,000 metrics per 10 seconds, like we had, so imagine the question is, do you need this kind of resolution for the data from the past year? The answer is probably not. You can lose some resolution, but keeping in mind that the overall shape of your system will be, and your overall information from your data will be exactly the same, like on this picture. There is no matter if you take a look on the right, on the left, you will see there is a face. In Influx, you can create a continuous query. Continuous query can allow you to uh, lose resolution for your data. This query will be automatically performed on the server for every interval you defined. And of course, you can create another chart for query create, for the data created uh, in this uh, continuous query. So uh, the tick stack, the overview of the whole ar architecture is something like that. We've got the influx DB, the central point. We've got the chronograph, the, the, the visualization layer and we've got the capacitor, and we've got the telegraph, which is the input points for our application. If you've got some existing tools in your system, like FluentD, FluentD is a log aggregator, by the way, another great piece of software. You can connect existing part to the telegraph and get benefits from using uh, this kind of tools. If you are using the, the, the collect, very famous and very uh, popular and uh, widely adopted software, you can use Ad Influx as a backend from your collect. If you like Grafana, use Grafana to change it. No matter. Uh, to be honest, for me, using this kind of tools, it means that I've got the possibilities. I've got the possibilities and I know what is the application heartbeat. I know in every second, I know exactly what's going on in production. And in one application, in one project, we collected 8,000 uh, metrics points per 10 seconds. And some of them were used to create visualization. Some of them were used for anomaly detection to detect problems we have on production. So okay, you can use some very nice but extremely useful heuristics that take the value of the metrics from now and compare to the value of the metric seven days ago, one month ago. If the difference is greater than the defined threshold, just alert. If you've got the scale, this is a thing you can perform in three or five minutes, 
but the accuracy will be extremely high. And if not, you can use some, uh, it's a Yahoo EGATS uh, library for some advanced anomaly detection uh, uh, algorithms. Or you can also use the Twitter anomaly detection toolset. Everything, what you see, is open source. You can use it, uh, not tomorrow, <laughs> on Monday, uh, on, on, uh, in your system. And of course, you can also use your existing monitoring stack. If you are using the Nagios, take another software from the GitHub, Influx uh, Nagios plugin. Just connect the, the Nagios with some metrics you've got. If this metric, if the metric which describes the number of elements in the RabbitMQ queue is huge, just send me an alert. If the page view during the working business hour is zero, just send me an alert. Of course, you can use some different tool set. The Tick Stack, the, the Prometheus or OpenTSDB are only the, the open source propositions. Or can also use the software as a service. There are booths for uh, Blackfire. Guys, you can use some metrics from your application uh, in consisting to the, to the uh, Blackfire agent, or you can use, you can ask some other guys from Logmatic uh, to collect your data uh, outside your infrastructure. You can use the, for example, Logmatic uh, application to collect and send your logs there. So, no matter what kind of tools you, you've got, no matter what kind of tools you would like to use, it's always about the four elements the gathering, storing, presenting, interacting the data. So, as you see, <laughs> it's my last uh, thought for you. There's no rocket science here. This is all about collecting and sending the data. It's only about the rocket fuel for your system. So thank you very much uh, for, if you've got some questions, we've got some time? Yeah, so we, I think we've got two minutes. So if you've got some questions, how you can use it or, uh, or apply in your system. You can discuss. Or you can also uh, catch me after the keynote or before the keynote. So, we've got the questions. The <laughs> question? <laughs> if not, okay, thank you very much. If you would like to, to, to discuss in private, I'll be there. So, thank you very much. <laughs>